There is so much uncertainty in the world today. Whether it concerns our job, finances, the economy, or our health, our relationships with other people, we are uncertain about what tomorrow might bring. We want to feel safe. We want to feel secure and we want to have control in our lives. Ganahan tanay control sa atong kinabuhi. But the reality is, life is uncertain. We do not know what will happen tomorrow. And because of this, we are worried, stressed out, and oftentimes unhappy. So the question is, how can we find joy during uncertain times and deal with anxiety and fear of the unknown? So in this sermon, we will study Paul's exhortation to the Philippians that, they ha that we have to rejoice in the Lord always and not to be anxious about anything. So our passage for this morning is found in Philippians chapter 4, verses 2 to 9. So atong basahon, verse 2, I plead with Iodia and I plead with Sintiche to agree with each other in the Lord. Gihangyo ko si Iodia o si Sintike nga mag-uyon sila sa usag-usa diha sa ginoo. So who are these Yudia and Sintiche? Kisa man sila. There's nothing in the Bible that mentions about them. So these two women have been probably among the women uh, that would meet for prayer uh, when Paul first visited Philippi. Makita ninyo siya sa Acts chapter 16 verse 13. There is a backstory there. Um, probably these two are among those women. Here, Paul pleads, so ni hang si Pablo, that these two women, that they would agree with each other in the Lord. So what happened? So wala yung nakabutang sa Bible, yung sinitabot nila, but most likely, na sila'y away. There is a dispute among these two, probably church leaders, and the dispute, uh, most likely, dili siya doctrinal. It's not doctrinal, it's not about a moral issue. Because, uh, as we know, if there are doctrinal or moral issues, Paul would address it. For example, sa letter ni Paul to the Corinthians, there was a moral issue there, so he point out ni Pablo para i-correct. So, kani, naiaway si Yudia o Sintiche, kanyang duha kabayi, and their, their, their quarrels are personal in nature and could be considered trivial. Parang gamayra. gamayra. But the problem is, kani ilang conflict, there ang away nila, it has affected the unity of the church. And they have been causing division within the Philippian church. That is why uh, Paul publicly called them out na, Oy, magbati na kayo. You have to agree with each other in the Lord. So if you notice in this passage, Paul did not take sides. Wala ningun si Pablo, okay, ikaw sayup ka, ikaw sakto, mag-iusa mag, mo. So Paul did not take sides kasi kablo si Pablo, this is personal between them. And Paul encourages them na sila mismo nga maghiusa. Uh, Paul encourages them to set their differences and agree in the Lord. So, in the Lord. What do you mean by that? Paul is reminding them that they are sisters in Christ. So, dapat dili sila mag-away-away. Maghiusa sila. And that is why, if you notice, the theme of unity uh, uh, has been uh, central in the letter of Paul to the Philippians. If you remember, in Philippians chapter 2, verse 2, kani ang giingon ni Pablo, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and one mind. Moto giingon ni Pablo sa chapter 2, kay nai away, nai division sa church. Just imagine if you are Yudia and Sintiche, gi-mention mo sa letter. And this letter has have been, diba, the letters of Paul have been read uh, throughout the churches until now na hibaw na to na away sila so na, naging sikat sila because of this conflict of theirs and then this conflict pa ba, ba ano, is quite trivial and e even personal but the po but Paul decided to call them out because kabalo siya ang away niya dili na maayo although personal lang pero naapektuhan ang unity sa simbahan note that Paul if you notice in the passage Paul did not command them, Oy, mag, mag mo. There's, it's not a command. 
Paul pleaded, ni hangyo siya. Wala na gisugo, but di hangyo. Kaya siyempre, personal, di po nato ma-control ang tao kung mag magbalikan sila o dili. But Paul appealed to them for the sake of unity of the church. In the same way, uh, we can learn from here, dapat church leaders, uh, there's a limit on how church leaders can deal with uh, quarrels among church members. It's not our business to meddle with them, but we can encourage them to uh, to patch up. No, The church can med- mediate, we can serve as a go-in-between, but at the end of the day, dapat sila mismo ganahan po mag- mag-uli-anay. So, so we can learn from this. And uh, in verse 3, Ingo ni Paul, Yes, and I ask you, loyal yoke fellow, help these women who have contended at my side in the cause of the gospel. Oo, gihangyo ko usab ikaw, masaligan ko nga kauban. Kisa man ni loyal yoke fellow. Unsay pasabot ang yoke fe- fellow? Yoke fe- fellow in Greek is uh, sizigos. Sizigos, uh, uh, sa NIV, ang gigamit yoke fellow, but if you look at the latest version of NIV, uh, 2011, ang gamit companion or partner. So, kaning yoke fellow, wala gi mention sa yang ngalan. Well, most likely, hindi na kailangan i-mention yang ngalan because the Philippian church knows who Paul is referring to. So, ni hangyo si Pablo, since dili na magkaulian ang kaning duha ka bayi, ni hangyo si Pablo sa Osaka church leader, most likely, na please go in between, mediate, uh, mediate so that these two women can come into agreement so that uh, magkasinabot sila. Because sometimes sa mga away, you only see your own perspective. You do not see the perspective of the other person. That is why mas nindot kung magstoryahan ay, there's somebody should be in between so that they can express each other's uh, uh, kung hinanakit ba so that the other person would understand. And sometimes, uh, by, the, by the way, if you look at this, even believers are not exempted from disputes. And we need, no, we need someone or people to mediate so that they can patch things up. And then, if you notice, ang ingon siya, these women have contended at my side. So, kanyang mga bayi, dili na siya lang ordinary members, but they were there with Paul. They were there with Paul in preaching the gospel. They were there in their struggle with the gospel, in their striving with the gospel. Ibig sabihin, most likely, these women are leaders of the church. Leaders of the church, pero nag sila. And then, ingon si Pap- in Pablo, these women, along with Clement and the rest of my fellow workers whose names are in the book of life. Kani mga bayhana, uban ni Clemente, o sa uban pang mga kauban ko na nangalagad. Kansang mga ngalan na isulat sa libro nga listahan sa mga tao nga may kinabuhi nga walay katapusan. So, Paul reminded these two women that they are Christians, their names are in the book of life. So, in other words, this these women are saved. Dili lang, basin you might be thinking, ah, nag-away sila, baka di po sila Christians, parang ano lang, very petty, but these people are Christians, but they are having personal issues with each other. But Paul reminded them that they should reconcile because uh, in the first place, they are both uh, sisters in Christ and they are destined to be together in heaven, in eternity. Just imagine, uh, you're supposed to be together in heaven, basin i-assign mo ni Lord na roommates mo. Uh, so, da, habang napa mo sa kalibutan, magbati na kayo. <laughs> so, anyway, they're supposed to live together in eternity because they are brothers and sisters in Christ. So, Paul encouraged them, please, no, for the sake of the church, ano, uh, 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 be of the same mind, mag, mag-reconcile na mo. That's why, um, if ever there are uh, infightings in church, or in, even not in church, parang in general lang, pag may away, mas maganda, habang sa'yo pa lang, let's solve the issues. Because if uh, if uh, time goes by, the wound would fester, mudako, mu, mu, mulalom ang samad. That's why uh, uh, in any relationship, not only in churches, but in any relationship, as soon as possible, we have to patch up. Because things might get worse, and umabot ang punto na dapat i-call out pa ni Paul, kaning duha kabay. Imagine, in front of all the, all the people, kasi, di ba, remember mga, mga letters ni Paul, they will be read in the churches. So, gibasa, i-mention in public. Although, Paul, in fairness, Paul did not mention si away nila, but the point is, Paul have called them up, called them out to settle 
their conflicts with one another. So, you know, conflicts, not only in church, but elsewhere, would rob us of true joy. Diba? We're talking about joy. Siyempre, pag may kagalit ka, wala kang peace, wala kang joy. Every time makita mo yung tao, malagot ka. And that is not good. And, uh, and if we know that there's so much problem in this world, so, sa kadaghan ng problema nato, dumagan pa nato ang away. Diba? Especially if this away, pwede naman ma-resolve. Uh, this uh, problem is personal, so uh, Paul is encouraging, encouraging them. Please, uh, please, no, agree with each other in the Lord, in the Lord. So uh, Paul uh, reminded them that you know they have to consider others more important than than themselves. Because sometimes, uh, usually, usually in conflict, is ako ang tama. You think more about yourself than thinking about the other person. But Paul is saying in his letter to the Philippians, be of the same mind. Uh, don't consider yourselves better than others. Okay, so that's uh, uh, so that, that's the first exhortation ni Paul. Patch up, reconcile, okay, reconcile with one another. Let's go to verse four. Paul says, "Rejoice in the Lord always." I will say it again, rejoice. Paglipay kamo kanunay diha sa ginoo. Isulti ko kini pag-usab. Paglipay kamo. Paul exhorted the Philippians to rejoice always. If you notice, this is not the first time na gimension ni Paul. Gimension po niya, uh, po niya sa Philippians chapter 3 verse 1. So, joy and rejoicing is one of the theme of Paul's letter to the Philippians. You should not confuse Paul's teaching uh, with Bobby McFerrin's uh, statement, don't worry, be happy. Are you familiar with that phrase? Don't worry, be happy. Diba? Mayroon pang song yun, be happy. But th this is different. Kasi when you say uh, uh, rejoice in the Lord, it does not mean that dili ta maka-experience og problema. Dili pa sabot na, dili ta maka-experience og heartaches or grief or loss, whatever. But it's the opposite. Despite the adversity, despite the difficulties, despite sa mga problema, despite sa kaguol, atong choice na siya na malipay ta sa ginoo. And we rejoice regardless of our situation. It does not depend on our situation. If you notice, rejoice, it is a present tense. It's a present tense, meaning, dapat kanunay ta malipayon. And remember, when did Paul wrote this letter? Nasha sa bilanggo. He was in jail. Diba? In jail, and then he was so uncertain with his future. He could be killed, he could be executed by the Romans, yet, he chose to rejoice in the Lord. And ang mensahe niya sa mga Philippians, rejoice. So Paul is practicing what he, he preached. No? Gibuhat po niya. No? Gibuhat po niya, he rejoiced. That's why he's telling the Philippians to rejoice. Rejoicing is a matter of choice. And the object why the Philippians should rejoice or why we should rejoice is we have to rejoice in the Lord. The Lord is the object of our rejoicing. You know, the, the yung worldly happiness is different from godly happiness. Uh, the world says, diba, in the world, happiness depends on our circumstances. Magdepende na siya sa ating tabo na to. Malipayon ta kay natay, natay bonus, natay bagong sanina, natay bagong uh, gamit. Okay? Kumbaga, the happiness in this world depends on situation. It's situational. But it's different with Christians because true joy the object of our happiness is the Lord. It's not on the circumstances. Dili sa panghitabo, dili sa blessing, kundili sa ginoo. Kasi, kasi if you focus your happiness on situation, just imagine when things are go going well, you will happy. You will be happy. But if things are going bad, you will not be happy. Your life is just a roller coaster. No? Parang, parang magdepende ang happiness mo sa nahitabo. But here, Paul is telling us we have to rejoice always. It's a matter of choice. We have to make that choice regardless of our situation in life. And another exhortation ni Paul, sabi niya sa mga Philippians, let your gentleness be evident to all. Ipakita sa tanan ang inyong kaagho. Unsay pasabot ng gentleness? Uh, gentleness used here, ang gitranslate niya sa Greek word which literally means fair, reasonable, Mild, gracious, charitable. 
So ang pasabot na na, if you are gentle, you, you, you would not speak evil against anyone. Dapat dili ka pa, pala away. That's the point of Paul. Dapat dili mo pala away. You know, Aristotle said, one said, Gentleness is the willingness to forego one's own rights according to the letter of the law. But, ang pasabot na, you know you have this right, according to the law, you, you, this is your right, pero if you are gentle, you are willing to let go. You are willing to let go. People, uh, ang mga, ubang tao, diba, they will say harsh things to you, uh, sulti ang kasakit kayo, pero you are gentle, dili ka mumalos. You still speak gently to them in kindness. Kala ang pasabot ni Pablo, we have to be gentle to all, to all people, regardless whether they are our friends, our church members, or our enemies. We have to be gentle. And also, Paul is telling us that we should not be so rigid or so unbending on unimportant matters. Uh, what do you mean by that? Ang pasabutan, dapat dili kayo dapat sobrang stricto. Because there are some Christians who are like Pharisees. Parang there are set of rules dapat sundon. For example, mayroon sila, oh, dapat mo, mo, kwala, mo, bi- mo Bible study ka, ha? Dapat mo pray ka, sige. Pag dili ka mo pray, dili ka Christian. Or dapat mag-tight ka, sige. Pag dili ka mag-tight, dili ka tinood na Christian. Parang naging Pharisee masyado. There is no gentleness. Kasi if you look at the Bible, it's very clear that you have to give uh, uh, cheerfully. So hindi naman talagang na, na parang, parang ang ginagawa is, although we have to give, pero... There are people that uh, they have a list of things to do or not to do. Parang maging Pharisee. Dapat may mga listahan. Pag hindi mo gibuhat na siya, i-condemn ka. And there is no gentleness. There, there's no gentleness in how they approach things. And sometimes there are so Christians are very strict na muingon siya, napaka-immature ni mo, Christian ka pa naman. That, that is not the right way to deal with Christians because, with fellow Christians. Because if you all know, kita tanan, we... Uh, once in our life, we are also baby Christians. We have to give others a slack. Parang uh, wag tayo masyadong ano, um, mahigpit, in other words. So, those who are mature should uh, give uh, immature or uh, baby Christians some slack. Parang give them leeway. We, ha- we should not be harsh to people. No, we, ha- we should not be harsh to people. We should not be stricter than the Lord. Yun. Kung Kung hindi naman kung hindi naman gi-require sa Bible, dapat dili ta mas strikto kaysa sa Ginoo because there are some Christians mas strikto pa sila sa Ginoo. Kumbaga, there's nothing in the Bible which says that you are not allowed to watch certain movies. Pero kung ikaw Christian ka, bawal ni siya, bawal ka mulanto ani, bawal ana ana ana, para naging Pharisee ka na. And that is not being gentle. And, and, and even parents here knows, no? Pag sobrang higpit ta sa mga anak nato, Ma- maging rebelde sila. We have to uh, we have to correct them with love. But if we are too rigid, the tendency is that they will rebel because they do not like it. In the same way, Christians should be gentle with other people because sometimes no, kung natay criticism, we have to say it properly because otherwise, uh, the other person will take it negatively. Dili na siya maminaw sa imong constructive criticism ang para niya giatake ni mo siya. In fact, uh, even in the in the Bible, it says in Proverbs 15 verse 1, a gentle answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. No, the, the manner how we say things is very important. Uh, as well as our message. Because sometimes yung, yung message na to ma overwhelm sa uh, the way we speak. And also in Galatians chapter 6, verse 1, if someone is caught in a sin, you who live by the Spirit should restore that person gently. Gently. So, bisan nakas- kung nare, nakasala ay mong igsoon, we have to restore that person gently. That's in the Bible. So, there is no room to condemn. Because if we condemn that person, kasi may tabo, mulayo na lang sa simbahan. Adi na ko, kay, kay ano, uh, ang simbahan very, con- uh, very judgmental or condemning. But if you look at the Bible, it's very clear here that we have to uh, restore that person gently. We have to be gentle with our words uh, and uh, so as not to hurt people and cause them to stumble. You know, uh, we're talking about joy. So our words can hurt people and 
give uh, can rob people of joy so we have to be careful also dapat dapat we have to be gentle no i'm not saying that hindi natin pwede sila correct we we should correct no we should correct but with love there is a proper way of correcting the wrong just to let the person know that you love that person you are correcting them nothing personal you are you have genuine concern for them so important you approach no important approach that is why paul says that we have to be gentle to all and then nag-ingon po siya the lord is near uh duol ang gino unsay pasabot ani uh there could be two meanings one meaning is that the lord is near to us meaning the lord is close to us christians because as, as we all know uh we, if we are christians diba we have the holy spirit nato spirit santo magkauban nato so duol ang gino kanako kanato another interpretation is that the lord is near coming soon so that's another interpretation okay and then in verse 6 Okay, verse 6 and 7. This is a very fam- a popular verse, very familiar verse, and I'm sure uh, all of you uh, know know about this. Kung wala pa kakabalo, paila-ila ka na ako, no? And then it's best that if you can commit to memory, please try to memorize because this verse uh, had helped me a lot, especially during times when I am uh, I, I, I'm anxious, worrying, Kani good ang memory verse na makatabang nato. So let's read the passage, uh, six to seven. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your requests to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Okay, he may may not on passage because this is a very nice passage. Dapat ma-internalize na to so, so that it's easier for, uh, for us to commit into memory. Okay, do not be anxious about anything. Ayaw mo kabalaka sa bisan unsa. So if you notice, do not be anxious. This is a present tense. Ibig sabihin, uh, we should not be anxious. This should be a habitual attitude. Dapat habitual ni siya. Present tense. Um, Paul is telling us, Oy, stop worrying. In other words, stop worrying. So, the question is, what is worry? Kasi, kasi wala ka balos kabalaka. I try to ask my children, do you know what is worry? Do you worry? What's a kasabot? Kay, usually, kita mga adults, kasabot ta, what is worry? But anyway, we discuss. Basin mga adults, dili, wapo kabalo, wapo kabalo, unsa yung worry? Okay, what is worry? The Greek word, uh, translated anxious, means to be pulled in different directions. To be pulled in different directions. Uh, so, for example, uh, on one direction, you have hope. On the other direction, you have fear. So you are worrying. Kasi, ano, should I have hope or should I be afraid? So you are being pulled by, uh, you are being pulled in two different directions. Yun, yun ang uh, literal meaning sa Greek word. In, uh, in English, we, we say anxious. Do you know that in the old English root word ng worry means to strangle? Yung worry, ang root word talaga niya sa Old English is strangle. Diba, if you come to think of it, if you're worried, you're parang, you are strangled. No? You are strangled, parang, uh, parang lisod, diba? Lisod kaayo. No? And do you know that worrying or anxiety is a common mental health disorder? Yes, it's a common mental health disorder. In fact, a survey shows that only 8% of the things that people worried about were legitimate concerns. Only 8%. 8% lang sa atong kabalakhan, uh, tinuod na dapat kabalakhan. 92% were either imaginary, never happened, or involved matters over which we have no control. In other words, mahilig tayo mag-overthink. Wala pa'y problema, mag- maghuna-huna na tayo problema na wala namang yung problema in the first place. And what do people worry about? Uh, I'm sure you already know. We worry a lot, a lot of things. Uh, we worry about money. Wala kwarta. And some people worry that they have so much money. It's also a worry. Kay pwede ka makidnap. Ma- 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 makidnap, yes. So, too much money, too little money, worried. And then people worried. Uh, people are worried that they have no work. Why trabaho magworry? Kasi yempre wala makaon. Ang ang ubang tao they worry because they have too much work. Nandina na kaya sobrang daghang work. 
And some people worry because of their friends. They have no friends or nag-away sila sa friends nila. And there are people who worried, who are worried about their marriages. Nabawa, hindi na okay. The, the relationship is on the rock. They're worried what will happen. And people are also worried about their children. Pagdako sa ilang anak, wala na, naglahit na, lagit, lahit na, batasan. No, they're worried what will happen to them. And we, uh, and sa mga studyante, you are worried about exams. Exam na po, projects, so many deadlines. So there's so many things that we worry about. Ang mga negosyante, worried. Ano, worried sa BIR. <laughs> worried sa, ano, so, ma- so many things, di ba? Uh, worried na malugi, no? ma- ma-bankrupt. So there's so much things that we can worry about. And what's the problem with worry or anxiety? Do you know that worrying is a sin? Sala ang sigi magkabalaka. Nga naman, ang problema pag nag-worry ta? So what if we worry? Well, worry is the greatest thief of joy. Kung gusto ka malipay, ayaw pag-worry. Because if you are worrying, you will not uh, have peace, you will not have joy. Worry is wrong thinking. No, you're thinking something that is not right, and it's also wrong feeling. You're feeling something that is not uh, supposed, something that you're not supposed to feel about certain things, about certain people, about certain circumstances. And you know that worrying is useless, worthless. Sabi Jesus in Luke chapter 12, verse 26, Since you cannot do this very little thing, why do you worry about the rest? Kumbaga, it's useless. So, you, it's beyond your control. Why? Pag mag-worry ba mo, masul ba ng problema? Dile, di ba? It's useless. And worrying is wasteful. And I like the teaching of Jesus in Matthew 6, 25 to 34. Inguni uh, Jesus, Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, what you will eat, drink, about your body, what you will wear. Is it not life more important than food, your body more important than clothes? That's an example. Look at the birds in the air. No? They look at them. They do, not, they do not sow. They do not reap. Yet, the Heavenly Father feeds them. Gipakaon sila ng, mga, ng, uh, uh, ng Diyos Amahan. Can any of you by worrying, add a single R to your life. And why do you worry about clothes? Ang mga uban tao, ganahan sila, nice clothes. But uh, sabi, ni, sabi ni Jesus, see how the flowers of the field grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of this. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, Will he not much more clothe you? O oh, you of little faith. Ouch. No, O oh, you of little faith. So do not worry. Do not worry what we shall eat, what we, what we shall drink, what we will wear. Because the pagans run after these things. But the, your Father in heaven will uh, provide. Because he knows what you need. Kabulo ang ginoo unsa imong kinahanglan. Moto ingon siya, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, in Jesus, sub verse 34, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Ay na mo mag-worry sa unsay may tabo, ugma. Kay every day, na amoy, uh, uh, na amoy mga problema. Okay, that is Matthew 6, verse 25 to 34. So if you are worried, try to read this passage again and again. And I, I, ano no, I internalize no para mawala ang inyong worry. You know, worry is borrowing tomorrow's strength to solve today's problem. Worry is the interest we pay on borrowed trouble. We know that we can change our past, but we can ruin our present by worrying about our future. You know, why is worrying a sin? Because it shows that we lack trust. Wala tay salig sa ginoo. Mauto nag-worry ta. Worrying is sin. Just imagine this, this scenario. Let's say, a father. A father uh, came home one, one night. Nakita niya yung anak. Naghilak. O anak, nga na naghilak man ka? Tay, naghilak ko. Kay nag, nagabalaka ko. Uh, this child, by the way, is seven years old. no? Seven years old. Naghilak ang bata. Hilak, sige, hilak. Nungutan ang amahan. Nga na naghilak man ka, anak? Nagkabalaka ko, tay. Kay basin wala na tayong makaon. Ha? Nag- nagabalaka ko tayo, kay basin wala, ugma, wala na tayong mapuyan. 
Nag- nagkabalak ako tayo, basing wala na ko isuot na uniform sa eskwelahan. Ingo ng amahan, don't worry about these things, ako bahala ni mo. Pero ingo ng anak, dili tayo, mag- nag-worry yun ko, di yun ko katulog. If you are that father, how will you feel? Kasi yung mabati, mabati ni mo, noong sa may anak na ako, way salig na ako. Mga ganit, nagtrabaho ko, nagpursigay ko, I love my child. Because I, w- I love my child, since I love my child, I will take care of his needs. And just imagine how God will feel if you keep on worrying. Di ba parang wala tayo salig sa ginoo? That is why, you know, worrying is an insult to our God because it shows that we lack faith in Him. And then, ingon si Pablo, uh, but in everything, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. But in everything, we have to pray to God in everything. So, the word but, this is a contrast. There's a contrast. So, ibig sabihin, Paul is telling us, okay, di ba, anxious mo, you're worrying, ito ang tambal. This is the antidote to anxiety or worrying. So, sabi na, in everything, uh, present your request to God. You pray to the Lord in everything. When you say everything, what's say about everything? Grammar. Everything is tanan. All situation, every problem that you have, you go to God in prayer. So, you don't go to God Uh, ay mo ato lang ako sa ginoo pag dako akong problema pero pag gamay ah di na lang because the Bible says everything so it means that whether your problem is big or small you have to go to God in prayer because God says I am the Lord your God is there anything too hard for me Jeremiah 32.27 there's nothing difficult to God so that's why we have to go to God tell God about our concerns whether little concern okay lang ba Lord uh, unsa akong pili una sa nina na suoton Is it okay? Does it, are we wasting God's time? No, because God is concerned about our lives. He's concerned about us. That's why, di ba sabi ni, ni Paul, pray without ceasing. And how do you pray without ceasing? You have to be, be, you have to be connected with the Lord in every step of the way. Lord, mula ko na ko, good morning Lord. So every step of the, the way, you pray unceasingly, no? Everything that you do, you want to eat, thank you for the food. Lord, uh, help me choose the, the clothes that I, I, uh, that I will wear. Lord, paggawas na ako, please, ano, may nakita ka, please protect this kid, bless him. You know, you stay connected with the Lord. Pray without ceasing. And the Lord is concerned even about little things. So we should not think that dapat ka mga dakong butang lang dapat tamo doon sa ginoo. There, 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 is, there was a story. There was a missionary. Niyad to siya sa bundok, no? Nakita siya layon, leon, no? Niampo siya, Lord, tabangin ko, Lord, na dili ko makaon, di ko mapahamak. Rescue me. Indeed, God rescued him. So, God save him from the from the mouth of the lion. So, pag uli niya, pag pag uh, pag abot niya sa ano sa sa tent, uh, since uh, he is a missionary to the mountains, uh, that night uh, he could not sleep. Why? Because there was a mosquito na lamok, na lamok na na gipaak siya. So, gipangita ni lamok kay gusto niya patyon. And the whole night gipangita na dili na mapatay patay. And then, uh, so di siya katulog the whole night. And the Holy Spirit impressed upon him. You know, God rescued you from the lion when you prayed. So, uh, but you thought that you can handle the mosquito on your own. Diba? So, so the mistake of the missionary, sabi na, ay, gamay rabi tao mosquito, ako na bahala. But you know, whether our problem is big or small, we can always come to the Lord in prayer. So everything, no? remember, everything, okay, everything. Then, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, Okay, magtingala mo. Lahi ba yung prayer, petition? Pa, pa, di ba parehas lang na siya? Sabi ni saya, pinagi sa pag-ampo o pangapmuyo uban ang pagpasalamat. You know, the word prayer carries with the idea of adoration, worship, pagsamba. No? Uh, you know, when we adore God, whenever we pray, kasi uh, often than not, no, pag-approach natin sa prayer, Lord, tagay ko, ane, give me this, give me that. Um, there's no worship anymore. So the best thing when we go to prayer, we have to start with adoring God, praising God. Lord, thank you, Lord. You are a great God. You are almighty God. You are the God who provides. Why? Because whenever we adore God, we magnify God. Diba? Whenever we magnify God, makita na to na dako ang atong ginoo kumpara sa atong problema. Because the problem is when we look at our problem, we see 
the, you, how big our problem is. But if we look at how big our God is, then it's easier, no? It's easier to go through these difficulties. So when you are worried, the first thing that you have to do is to worship, to pray, to pray to God, to worship God. And the second is petition. Ang petition in other translation is supplication. Mo ni na, Lord, mo ni akong concerns, mo ni akong problema, tabangin ko, Lord. And please make sure, whenever you pray, dapat specific. Ay lang ingon, Lord, uh, provide, give me my daily bread. Very specific, Lord, I do not have a job. Please give me this job. Give, please give me a job. Lord, nag-apply ko ni company. Lord, if it is your will, na makuha ako. So, make your prayer very specific and precise. You have to get real with God. So, whenever we communicate with God, by the way, take note that whenever we pray, dapat yung attitude nato is not demanding. Dili pwede tamang yung, Lord, tagay ko ane, I want this. Because that's demanding. Whenever we pray, we have to give allowance for God's uh, will to work. Kasi kung hindi li will ni Lord, dili li na ihatag. Now, God's answer could be yes, no, and, and even wait. And we should have that humility. Dapat humble ta, na bisan dili na ihatag na to, dawaton na to. Lord, but your will be done. No? Your will be done. Uh, kung si gusto niyo mahitabo na ako, Lord. No? So take note that prayer is Christian's antidote to anxiety. Prayer is the Christian's antidote for, for anxiety. So if you want to worry less, then pray more. More, uh, more prayer, more power, and less worry. And then, English, with thanksgiving. Why? Why with thanksgiving? So we have to be thankful. Salamat, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the past blessings. What else? Obviously, ang pinakimportante yung salvation, no? Because of God's grace, gift of grace, agi sa grasya, gihatag niya ang iyang bugtong anak, ang si Jesus Christo. We have to thank God for that. And then, it's also good practice. Lord, thank you for the answer that you will give me. So it shows that we have this heart of gratitude. And when we, whenever we offer thanks, it shows that we, we believe na ito uta na God is good. No? Salamat, Lord. Just like yung, ano, yung leopard, but there were ten lepers. God, uh, Jesus healed all of them, pero ang usana ni Balik na nagpasalamat. So ang gusto ni Lord na always, whenever we pray, whether ihatag niya o dili, we give thanks to the Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the answer prayer. And then, present your request to God. Kung dili, uh, pangayuahin noon sa ginoo ang inyong kinahanglan. You know, you may be wondering, di ba, the Bible says that God is powerful and omniscient. omniscient. So, why do we have to tell God uh, our request kung kabalo na siya sa atong kinahanglan? Di ba, pag pilosopo, nga no? Di ba, kabalo na si Lord sa, uh, sa akong kinahanglan? Nga no, nga no, mangayap maman ko kaniya. Why? Well, the Bible says, in 1 Peter 5, 7, that we have to cast all anxiety on the Lord. Whenever we pray to the Lord, nagpakita ta, nga, na nagdepende ta niya. Whenever we pray, it shows that we depend on Him. We acknowledge our total dependence on the Lord. That's why whenever we ask Lord for help, it shows that we depend on Him. So that is what prayer is all about. Oh, yes, God knows already what you need, but gusto po niya na mangayo ka, ka niya para pakita na, Lord, dili na ako ni kaya because I need you, Lord. You're the one who can give this to me. And when we're talking about prayers, you have to be also be careful because um, you have to pray with the right motive because there are barriers, no? Barriers to prayer. Because uh, some people think that, okay, and whenever we pray, God will answer our prayer automatically. There's nothing in the Bible that promises that whenever you pray, God will give it to you. It, it also depends on His will. Kagustuhan ba niya? Ihatag na siya? And also, we have to be careful because uh, we know that uh, from Psalm 66 verse 18, if, if we cherish sin in our heart, then the Lord will not have listened. So there are barriers to prayer. Dapat God's will, dapat uh, we have to confess our sins. No, First uh, John 1, 9, uh, we have to confess our sins. He is faithful and righteous to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So dapat, no, we have to present our request to God because it shows that we depend on Him. So sa verse 6, ingon siya, muampo ta. So verse 7, kung gibuhat nato, in verse 7, 
And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Okay, if you notice, Paul did not say, no, okay, if you pray, God will answer your prayer. Wala, nakabutang. Kung ampo ka, ang, ang ihatag ng ginoo is ang iyang kalinaw. That is the promise that the Bible says that we will have when, if we pray. Ang kalinaw sa Diyos, nga labaw sa tanang pagsabot. Kasi pasabot na Kasi pasabot anong labaw sa tanang pagsabot. It means that yung, 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 yung peace na ihatag ng ginoo, it's something that is beyond our understanding. Dili na ito masabot. Dili masabot sa atong huna-huna. Why? Because the peace that God gives us is different from the world peace. It's different. It's, it's divine in origin. No? So, what's the peace? No? Peace is defined as inner calm or tranquility. That is based on our confidence in our God that He's able and willing to do everything for the best of His children. Kablota, no? Kablota, nabuhato ni Lord. Uh, tanan ng iyang gibuhat, all things work together for the good of those who love Him. Mauto natin kalinaw. Dili ta magkabala ka, sige. And then, ang, kabalo ba mo, ang kalinaw na ihatag ng ginoon, lahi sa kalinaw sa kalibutan. Because Jesus said in John 14 verse 7, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled. And do not be afraid. So, ang kalinaw na ihatag ng ginoon is lahi sa kalinaw sa kalibutan. Because that peace, no, despite the adversity, despite the trouble that we have, we can rest in peace with the Lord because we know that He will never leave us nor forsake us. And then, um, ibalikan na to. And the peace of God. No? Peace of God. Um, in Romans chapter 5, verse 1, diba? when, when, uh, when, when, we, when we give our life to the Lord, we have this peace, we are at peace with God. Meaning, kasi before, kaaway tas ginoo. But once we accepted and trusted in His Son, Jesus Christ, we are at peace with the Lord. Kaya na ta. We are at peace with the Lord. And then, here, uh, God will give us peace. The peace of God. Moto, ang, ang kalinaw ng ginoo mismo, ang ihatag niya kanato, na bisan unsa ang nahitabo sa atong circumstances, it doesn't matter because that is from the Lord. And that peace of God will guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Magabantay sa inyong mga kasing-kasing o sa inyong mga hunahuna diha kang Kristo Jesus. Kaning word na guard sa Greek, it's a military term. It's a military term which means to keep watch over or to take into protective custody. Just imagine mga military, di ba? Bantayun nun yun nila ang mga prisoner. They have to guard. So here, ang kalinaw na ginoo, mauni siya ang mubantay sa atong kasing-kasing o huna-huna. So meaning, God's peace will guard us against anxiety, against doubt, fear, trouble, distress, any, any evil thoughts. No? Siya mismo mu-guard sa atong kasing-kasing. Uh, and then, the peace of God guards two things, our heart. Even if we don't feel, okay, we are afraid, we are, you know, God, uh, the peace of God will guard our hearts and as, as well as mind. Kasi minsan, pag wala ti kalino, di ba, daghan kay mga gihuna-huna na to. And God, God's peace will be the one which will garrison or will guard our mind so that we will not keep on thinking those evil thoughts. Okay? So let's go to verse uh, 8. Verse 8, again, is a good memory verse. If you can commit this to memory, please do so. This is also one of my favorite uh, passages in the Bible. In, uh, chapter 4, verse 6 to 8. Yeah. Uh, finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admira admi admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Kasi pasabot ni Pablo, if you want to summarize everything, we have to think positive thoughts. Think positive thoughts. Kasi magtingala mo, di ba, ano, uh, di ba, in the world, sabi, oh, okay, think positive, think positive, think positive. Pero ang think positive ni Pablo, very specific, itong mga ano, characteristics. And what's the uh, beauty of having 
uh, what's the beauty of thinking right? Kasi, kasi di ba, our topic's about joy. About joy. And sometimes, what will rob us of our joy is our mind. Because we keep on thinking negative thoughts. Kasi kung puro negative, puro negative ang atong iniisip, wala tay kalinaw, wala tay kalipay. That's why Paul is telling us, think positive thoughts. Think positive thoughts. So we should let our mind control our actions. Um, having a right thinking is necessary so that we have perfect peace. Makita na to sa Isaiah 26 verse 3. You will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you. So, kung, kung gusto nyo ng kalinaw, dapat start with your mind. No? Think positive thoughts. So, let's discuss one by one. What are these positive thoughts that we have to think of? Sabi niya, finally, brothers, whatever is true. Uh, itong whatever, pag sinabi sabi, whatever, anything, or anything. Whatever is true, kung unsa ang tinuod. So, unsa may mga huna-huna ang tinuod? Well, so dapat dili ta maghuna-huna ng bakak. And some, sometimes, no, when we, he, when we listen to fake news or rumors, wala tayo kalinaw because uh, we, we, nag, 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 nag huna huna tayo daot no? sayo. That's why you have to know, is this the truth? Because if it's not true, then we should not think about them because it will rob us of peace and of joy. And, and where can we find the truth? Basically, the truth can be found in God, the Holy Spirit, in Jesus Christ, as well as in the Word of God. So, kung nakiduda, kung tinood sa dili, test it in the Bible. Test uh, it using the Bible. And second, whatever is noble. Bisan unsa nga halang don. Unsa yung pasabot ng halang don? Whatever is worthy of respect. And then, whatever is pure. Pag sinasabi natin pure, uh, innocent, morally pure, free from blemish or contamination, whatever is lovely, mo itong huna ni mo, like, uh, lovely, kanang nindot na, uh, uh, whatever is pleasing, whatever is admirable. Admirable means whatever is of good reputation. Mauto atong hunahunaon. If anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Kung bisan unsa nga maayo o dalaygon, hunahunaa ninyo kanunay. So it refers to moral excellence. So that's very important. We have to guard our thoughts. We have to guard our thoughts. If you think holy thoughts, you will be holy. But if you think garbage, you'll be garbage. Diba? Ang, ang, ang principle, garbage in, garbage out. That's why, my brothers and sisters, importante, you have to guard our, our minds. Uh, careful mo, unsa inong lantawon sa movie. Careful what you watch, movies. Careful what you read. Because uh, if you read garbage, then you will fill your mind with garbage. And how can we uh, think positive thoughts? How can we fill our mind with holy and godly thoughts? Well, we do that by reading the Bible. Because the Bible contains God's truth. Because it's impossible. Uh, let's say in your past, you have been addicted to, let's say, uh, pornography. Or you have been reading, mga, you, you've been watching mga violent movies. So how can, you, how can you remove those garbage? Well, you have to fill in with the word of God. You have to cleanse your mind. Diba sabi ni Paul sa Romans chapter 12, verse 2, Do not be conformed to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. It's all in the mind. So if, kung ganahan ta, malipayon ta, we have to fill our minds with positive thoughts, with godly thoughts, and we start that by reading the Bible. And ingon sa Psalm 119, verse 11, sabi ni David, uh, we have to, he, he, see, David, he hide God's word in his heart so that he may not sin against him. So, dapat inana po ta, we read the Bible, we take the time to memorize, read, reread, meditate on the word of God because that is how we fill our minds with positive thoughts. Kaya kung positive atong huna-huna, dili ta magkabalaka, dili ta maghuna-huna o dili maayo. And then last verse, 9. Whatever you have Learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice. Bisan unsa ang inyong natunan o nadawat o nadungog gikan kanako or nakita kanako buhata kini. So earlier we talk about right prayer, and then in verse eight we talk about right thinking. In verse nine we talk about right 
living. We practice what we learn. We practice what we heard from the Bible about preaching the Bible. We practice what we read in the Word of God. We practice them. Kasi, alam mo, uh, yung Bible, it's not right if we listen and then mugaw sa pusa dalunggan. We have to practice them. We must learn to, we must uh, put into practice what we have uh, read in the Bible. Sabi na, uh, whatever you have seen in me, put them into practice. So another lesson that we can learn is that we should emulate, uh, imitate godly leaders. Godly leaders. Para makita na to, okay, siya, tao siya, pero is able to stand firm. So ako, ma-inspire ako that I should also stand firm in the Lord. And then lastly, and the God of peace will be with you. Ubanan gayod ka mo sa Diyos nga nagahatag o kalinaw. God both gives the peace and He is the source of our peace. Di ba kanina? Uh, sabi na, uh, do not be anxious about any, anything, but in everything by prayer, supplication, with thanksgiving, present your request to God and the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and mind in Christ Jesus. So the peace of God, ihatag na ginoo nato ang iyang kalinaw and ang kanindot, God he is our source, and the source of the peace will be with us. Di ba kanindot, ang source ng kalinaw, magkauban ka nato. The God of peace, the God of peace will be with us. So you know, it's very nice, no? If you are, uh, if you are so anxious about so many problems, all you have to do is to follow the advice of Paul. Very practical advice, and and ang kanindot, Anna, the God of peace will be with us. So let's just summarize. So ma'am ito na today. Okay. So here are the lessons that Paul is telling us on how to find joy in uncertainty. Now, we know that life is so uncertain, so many problems. We're so worried about so many things. So what must we do? First things first, reconcile with those whom we are in conflict with. So if you remember in verses 2 to 3, Paul pleaded with Judea and Sintiche to agree with each other in the Lord. Kasi kanin duha ka bayi, di ba? Nag-away-away sila. They, they, they have caused uh, this unity in the church. And Paul is telling them, okay, mag-balikan, uh, mag, uh, mag, 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 mag-hinausan na mo. No? Anyway, you are both Christians, so this is not right. For the sake of the church, uh, be reconciled. So the first thing that we'll do, because sometimes, no, we don't have joy kasi uh, sa dami na problema, dinagdag pa natin ng problema with other people. How can we experience joy whenever we go to church or whenever we see that person, di, di ba? Malagot ta. No? That, that is not good. So the first thing that we have to do is to reconcile. We have to imitate the Lord. Parehas kay Lord, no? Na bisan mga kaaway niya, gihigug man niya. So we have to love our enemies as yourself. So, hindi porke na, ah, di siya muduol na ako, di ipag muduol niya. So, it, does, it's, it doesn't work that way. Because if you say that you are Christian, if you are true Christian, you have to be reconciled. Because our God is a God of love and we have to imitate Him. Second lesson is that we have to rejoice in the Lord always. So, rejoicing is a matter of choice. Dili siya magdepende sa atong circumstances. It doesn't depend on our circumstances. We have to choose to rejoice and the, the object of our rejoicing is the Lord. Not money, not circumstances, not our house, not our job. Those things are just temporary. We find joy in the Lord. And third, we have to be gentle. Gentle to all people. You know, when we are harsh to other people, we cause them to stumble. Because we, we hurt other people. We rob them of, of their joy. And pag malagot sila, mubalo sila, ikaw, mawad ang pagka joy, kay malagot po ka. So, you know, better if we live in harmony with each other. No, we, we, we treat each other gently in the Lord, and if we need to correct, we do it lovingly. We do it lovingly. So, be gentle, verse 5. And in, in, uh, in uh, verses 6 to 7, we learn that we should not worry. We should not be anxious about anything, anything, big or small. But in everything, satanan, butang, we have to present our request to God. We have to pray to the Lord in everything. Whether it's a big problem, small problem, we pray to the Lord. 
by prayer and supplication. Prayer and petition. So we pray, we adore, we praise God, and then anhat mo ngayo Lord tabang. Okay? And then don't forget to give thanks. Whenever we give thanks, it shows our faith, it shows our gratitude to the Lord. And then present your request to God. And then what will happen if we pray? Then the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard our hearts and minds. So it, it, it will guard us from having uh, negative thoughts. It will guard us from heartache. And then uh, number five, think positive thoughts. So whatever, uh, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. So, ayo pag overthink ayo. Ay pag overthink mga negative thoughts kay wala may tabo, no? You you just because you know, most of the negative things that we think about will never happen. Ano alam mo magka problema pag niabot na? Okay? Pag hindi wala pa niabot, don't overthink. Don't overthink. Instead, think positive thoughts. And how can we fill our minds with godly thoughts? By reading the Bible, by memorizing the Word of God, and uh, uh, and meditating on the Word of God, and finally, we have to put everything into practice. Imitate uh, leaders. Dapat dili lang mamino tatas gawasapod, no? We have to put everything in, into practice, and then, and the peace of God will be with you. Uh, by the way, why should we put everything into practice? Obviously, uh, the Bible tells us what are the things that are sins to the Lord. So if we do that, if we commit sin, obviously we won't have peace. We won't have joy. Kaya siyempre, uh, kabulutan na supak na siya sa kagustuhan ng ginoo. So that's why it's also important that we have to obey so that we can have peace and joy. So with that, no, uh, with the peace of God to guard us, and with the God of peace to guide us, why should we worry? Why should we worry? Okay. So can we all please stand? Let's end with prayer. Salamat Lord sa imong pulong o God uh, through, the, through uh, Paul in his letter to the Philippians. We're so thankful O God for the encouragement that you have given us Lord. Lord, if some of us or many of us are worried about tomorrow, O God. It is our prayer that you will fill us with joy and peace so that we can face tomorrow and not be afraid. Father in heaven, I pray that we will apply everything that we have learned this morning, O God, that we will reconcile with those who have hurt us, that we will always Choose to be happy and rejoice in you, Lord. That we will be gentle. We have to practice gentleness in the words that we say to other people so as not to hurt other people. And I pray, O oh God, that, that uh, we will learn, O oh God, to trust in you, to lay everything down at your feet, Lord Jesus. Na ihatag na mo tanan mga problema, among, among kigabalakhan, Lord, among ihatag tanan kani mo, Lord. And uh, it is my prayer, O oh God, that you will fill our thoughts with godly thoughts, whatever is true, noble, pure, lovely, admirable, that we will not think negative thoughts, but instead focus our attention and eyes in our Lord Jesus, knowing, O God, na dili ni mo kami pabayan. Salamat, Lord. And I pray, O God, that you will uh, put in us the desire to obey you, O God. And it's our, our prayer, O God, we ask for your forgiveness for the many times, Lord, that we have been disobedient to you. And I pray, O God, that you will Help us to be obedient, O oh God. Change us, O oh Lord, so that, um, so that um, we will have this peace. And I pray, O oh God, that you will fill us with your peace and that your presence will be with your children always until you come back to take us home. Salamat, Lord. Lord. In Jesus' name, all this we pray. The Church of God says, Amen. <laughs>